Hey, what's going on guys? Sean here, living the corporate pilot life. I got a quick Tech Tuesday video for you guys. I'm running a little bit late getting this one out. I usually get them out in the morning, so I apologize. I'm working on it, but I did launch a full video this morning, so two videos, one day, you're welcome. So uh, anyway, I want to show you guys something that uh, has been a big question lately, and that is about the yoke in the Hawker. I get, the most common question I see right now is, how do I like the yoke on the Hawker compared to the Gulfstream? You know, how is it flying the, the two different because they are very different yoke styles. So let me turn you guys around, show you the yoke. All right, this is the yoke in the Hawker. As you can see, it kind of looks like one of those uh, tricycle handlebars that you see on uh, little, little girls' trikes or something. So it's definitely not the most impressive thing. But what does help the impression, impressive factor is that it's almost the exact same thing that's in the Concorde. So if you pull up pictures uh, of the Concorde yoke, it looks very, very similar. Someone told me it's the same part number, in fact, but I don't think that's true. They're just very, very closely related. Uh, so yeah, really a uh, very comfortable yoke. As you can see, your, your hand sits kind of on top of it, where the Gulfstream, you know, you, you hold it something like this. The Hawker, you, you hold it like this, kind of downward. And it's actually very comfortable to fly with. Um, you know, we've got our trim right here, just like we do on the, on the uh, Gulfstream with your thumb. Um, and it is a two-piece trim switch, just like the Gulfstream, so you can work two pieces individually uh, as a fail-safe in case one sticks, you're not going to get a runaway trim situation. So uh, that's, uh, that's kind of similar. We've got a button right here. This is our autopilot disconnect on the, uh, on the yoke. This one, obviously, it will auto autopilot disconnect, but then it also serves as the yaw damper disconnect. Uh, on final, we have to turn the yaw damper off on this airplane, unlike the Gulfstream. So that one serves there, but also the trim will, will disconnect the uh, autopilot as well, but not the yaw damper. Uh, down below it, we have the go-round button. That's kind of our toga button. The Gulfstream, we have that one on the throttles, so we don't have to do it on the yoke. We do it with our other hand. Um, the Hawker, you do it over here with that one. Uh, if you can kind of see over here, there's a button right here. This is called our pitch sync button. Uh, with that one, if we're in vertical speed or in pitch mode, if we press that, it syncs up to our, uh, our current situation. So if we're climbing currently at 3,000 feet per minute, but the computer, the, you know, the uh, PFD says we're, we should be climbing at 2,000, if we push that, it'll sync up to the 3,000 that we're currently at. So it's a pretty handy button that we use quite often, actually, uh, especially on initial climb out. If, uh, if it's not set where I want it, I can just bump that and sync it up to where I am. Uh, there are a couple holes over here that are not used on this side because if you jump over here to the co-pilot side, they're used on that one, but nothing's used here. So it's the same yoke from the left to the right. Uh, it's just the buttons are on the opposite side, obviously, depending on uh, which hand you're flying with. It's hard to see. Also, we have one other paddle right here. It's kind of hard to see it, um, but this is our push to talk button. So if we're flying along, we need to talk on the radio, you can pull that and it lets you talk. If you pull it back half a click, that's what cuts off the, uh, the hot mic for the, co the uh, cockpit. So if I have it there, I can talk to nobody, pull it all the way back, I talk to ATC, push it forward, I talk to whoever else is in the cockpit. Pretty easy to use, very comfortable. Um, the other item on it that uh, is a little different from the Gulfstream is we actually have the gust lock attached to it. It's right here. It's, it's kind of hidden up underneath the, uh, the left side here. It's kind of dark, I know, but, uh, but that is our gust lock. It's really hard to do one-handed. It's usually a two-handed operation. I'm obviously holding the camera with my right hand here. Let me see here if I can make it work. There we go. Okay, I got it. Um, so yeah, that is the gust lock. So obviously it, can, it locks everything in place so the controls aren't banging around out there. Obviously the rudder isn't, uh, isn't connected to that, so we have it down here. We've got a lever, just a long rod that, that drops into a hole on the floorboard and that locks the, uh, the rudders so now I can't push the rudders. It physically locks it in place right there. So we leave it like that. And then obviously before takeoff, you're gonna have to get rid of it. It's a little bit more in your face than the Gulfstream. The Gulfstream, if you guys remember, is over here on the, uh, on the center pedestal, uh, a big lever on the right side of the pedestal. It's a little, little more inconspicuous, so it's harder to, or it's easier to take off with that engaged. And if you guys remember from our Bedford, uh, Massachusetts accident, that was a, a major factor. Uh, with the Hawker, you can't even put your hand on the yoke really with, with this one in place. So, uh, but uh, take it off, you just pop it loose like that and uh, fold it back out of the way. And hey, there you go, you're, you're good to fly. So, uh, so yeah, that's it. Pretty easy, very comfortable, very nice to use. This one actually has these little leather, uh, little handle guards on them and they're, they're really soft, really comfortable, nice to fly with, you know, over here on, on the right side, same thing. Um, so yeah, I, I really like it. Am I partial to one or the other? 
yeah, I, I still like the Gulfstream, but uh, the, there's a lot more factors to it than just the yoke on that one. Uh, as far as flying between the two, jumping between the yoke styles, couldn't tell you the difference. You just jump in one and you just you feel right at home. So so either way, it's it's a really easy transition for me. But uh, anyway, that is the uh, the Hawker yoke comparison, I guess, to the Gulfstream. Hopefully you guys liked it. Maybe you learned a little something new. And uh, give me the thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you're new. We'll see you guys on the next Tech Tuesday video. Keep living the corporate pilot life. See ya.